Hi there, everyone. I'm Jonathan Burdick, Senior Solutions Consultant and Architect with Excalibur Data Systems. Today, we're going to go over how to create and manage what are called dynamic field groups uh, in the HALO ITSM system. So you might be asking, well, what are the benefits of this? And I think there's a few of them. Uh, first of all, it allows us to organize fields or entry attributes from a form perspective into collective buckets um, and presented um, in a nice organized uh, fashion. Uh, secondly, just because of the way the system behaves uh, with these dynamic groups, a user can collapse or expand these groups at will on the fly to move fields out of the way or to present a larger group of fields uh, when they're ready for input. So that can be really useful when you are uh, filling out a complex form or at least one that might have uh, a, a many, many uh, fields. Uh, the, we want to be able to have an organized presentation of our data. And so both of those kind, both of those benefits really roll into the last one that I see, and this is particularly for self-service users. Um, and it's totally aesthetic, but uh, when we create these dynamic groups, populate them with fields, present them on various ticket types, and then we have those presented in the self-service portal, the, the, the way that the portal uh, renders that visually, each group is a little bit of a shadow box, so to speak, on the form. So it ha gives a nice, clean uh, presentation for the individual who's filling out the content. So the interesting thing about this feature is that, at least from a configuration standpoint, in order to get there just sort of natively, we're going to we're going to follow the path that we would follow to add particular fields uh, to uh, one or more various ticket types in the system. Okay, so uh, we're going to from the landing page we're going to hit configuration first, then we'll go up to tickets under core features, and then finally we'll find ticket types under core features. And we are presented with now all of our various ticket types. Now, in this particular path, what we'll do is we should have in mind which object we want to modify, let's say incident. We'll proceed to the incident and then we will click edit. Find the field list uh, in within that particular object. And from here, we'll be presented with two different ways to get this work done. Notice that the content uh, here at the very top includes the text to uh, click here to add or modify field groups. All right. If we click here, what it does is it actually takes us to a brand new tab uh, uh, that presents us with the field groups that exist in the system apart from any particular ticket type. And so this was the part that I was alluding to earlier was that there really isn't a direct way to get to this particular type of screen. The other way is to proceed as you would uh, if you were to add various attributes to the object. Uh, you would click add down here and um, we'll, we could proceed in that fashion. It should be made clear that both of these, right, get you to the same basic interface. Just one is presented in a, a dialogue box style, whereas the other one is presented um, in an entirely separate tab um, in your browser. So if I were to follow the directions here and click here to modify the field groups, watch how it is actually opening up a separate tab. And it presents us with the field groups apart from any particular ticket type that exists in the system. Now, if you're following along in the URL, you can see that we've we've progressed um, pretty logically uh, to this place through not only the config space uh, here, but then uh, following along through the ticket space. And if I were simply to remove the content uh, beyond the slash there. Look where it takes us back to 
within the system. It takes us back to this screen uh, that we were just at a minute ago where we selected ticket types. So one could conclude that you could just very easily type in field groups here at the end of the URL, press enter, and voila, you're presented with these. So one of the things that we do is we'll often bookmark this page uh, in the browser so that we can get to these uh, quickly. Now, when you click new from this space, uh, you're presented with the same exact content and and uh, needs that we will be presented with in just a minute, except the, uh, as you can see visually here, the form takes up the entire, um, takes up the entire uh, interface, all right? So I'm gonna go back over to the main configuration place where we were working on the incident object. And this time I'll proceed through uh, the add button at the bottom where we would either add a field or we would add groups of fields. So notice how this is just presented within a dialog box rather than the entire interface. As with adding fields where we can select one or more fields to add to the, to the ticket type, the same thing is true for groups. If we were to leave this blank, should we not see the group that we want to be able to select, uh, we would just leave this blank and click add and here we are at the new field group window where now it's as you can see presented as a dialog box rather than in a brand new tab. So we'll just create a sample field group um, and, and the group header this is you can think of the group header as what the user will actually see on the form um, to indicate what that group really um, what content, what the content is in that group. So uh, sample fields in group, maybe we'll just leave it more generic. Now from here, we can simply click field list and now we'll add the fields that we want as part of that group. Um, it should be noted here that if you have custom fields that you need to add to this group, you're going to have to take care of those individually. You can't, um, we can't add uh, we can't create custom fields on the fly through this interface, but we can select from the various fields that exist in the system. Uh, so we could, uh, you know, maybe we select company name and uh, contact address, cost, uh, deadline, and then maybe we'll click save. So those will be the four fields that we'll add to this particular group. We'll save that. When you're done here, you can uh, edit each of these fields individually. So this would, this provides the configuration for that particular field, what happens under certain conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you run your mouse cursor down the left-hand side of each of these attributes, you see that they have these little dots here. We can, we can move uh, each of the fields up or down um, as appropriate. Um, should we want to change the order. Once we are done, we click save. Now, since we were editing this as part of the incident ticket type, you'll see that it added that sample field group to the bottom there. Um, as with the fields in the group, we can just drag this up to a different spot if we wanted this to be presented under the details. We'll click save. Now this ticket type has been modified. All we need to do now is go back. We'll click on incidents and I'll create a new incident from the menu here. And we not only see that we're presented with the details that uh, indeed was a uh, collapsible dynamic field group, but also sample fields in group. This is also a group um, and we can uh, collapse or expand that as necessary. Now, lastly then, uh, as I spoke about earlier about the presentation in the self-service portal, if I go up to the uh, my account information in the upper right-hand corner, expand that 
I can click on switch to end user portal. I'm just going to right click on that so that it opens up in a separate tab. Now, when the self-service portal has opened, I can now click on, for instance, log an incident. And you'll see that uh, this visual uh, shadow box sort of raised um, interface that presents a nice clean uh, visual uh, container for the user. So this is one of the um, this is one of the aesthetic reasons to present the data um, in this fashion. Even if the data wasn't even necessarily um, needed to be grouped for any particular reason, uh, we would often take this particular uh, approach just to create a clean looking interface for the user. So in closing, dynamic field groups are found when we are adding fields uh, to a ticket type. Uh, so while there's no direct way to get there, uh, we do have a little bit of a workaround in that we can uh, follow the URL. Uh, we could actually create a bookmark for that in such a way that they would open up the field groupings uh, directly in their own tab within the browser separate from any of the particular uh, ticket types. And then lastly, aesthetically here, as we just spoke about, even if we don't necessarily need to group fields together, it's often nice to do that simply from a presentation point of view. So that's a wrap on dynamic field groups. I hope this has proved valuable to your growth in learning the Halo ITSM system. So with that, have a great day.